I mentioned it was going to be a very busy second hour, and it is, and a really good one at that. We had Hall of Famer John Smoltz on right now. If you're on hold, stay there. We are joined by a three-time All-Star. He had 39 last night against Utah. He's a guard, of course, for the Trailblazers. Friday night, he became the third player in NBA history with 50 points or more in less than 30 minutes. 26 points, 7 assists, 5 rebounds per game this season. Portland is three games out of first in the Northwest, and they've got a big one at home tomorrow night against Golden State. Damian Lillard is my guest. Damian, so good to have you back. What's up? How are you? I'm doing great, man. I appreciate you having me again. Damian, I appreciate you all the time. Really good to have you back. Now, you're coming off a tough loss to Utah last night. It did end a nine-game home winning streak. So how quickly do you go about putting that in the rearview mirror and getting ready to face Golden State tomorrow night? I mean, well, obviously having a team like Golden State coming in, you got to have your mind right for them. Um, it's our last game before the break. And we want to get this win. You know, we we want to go into this break strong. And uh, that's a that's a tough game to finish it with. But if we're still thinking about the Utah game and what we could have did better, how we lost the game, you know, that's a setup for going into this one and getting ran at the gym. So um, we got to go into this game excited and ready to go into the break with a win. Damian Lillard joining us. I mentioned the 50 that you had uh, against the Kings on Friday night. The fourth time you've done that in your career, and you didn't even play the fourth quarter because the team had such a big lead. I mean, on a night like that, before the game, do you know that you're about to do something special, or does something like that only unfold naturally, and you never really know? I think it unfolds naturally. I think for um, guys who play a lot of minutes and get a lot of opportunity, um, it's natural for us to you know, maybe have nights where we know from the start that we're going to come out more aggressive and try to impose our will on the game. And that's how I felt before the game. Uh, we was on the back-to-back. We had a tough game the night before against Charlotte at home. And it was a, a setup for us to, you know, come playing against a team that had three days off. They was fresh uh, on their home court. And I knew that I was going to uh, need to come out and be aggressive I mean, be a force. So that was, that was on my mind. But, you know, I couldn't have predicted that I was going to going to the fourth quarter with 50 points. You know, I want to ask you about that because you didn't play that fourth quarter. But before we get there, I mean, they're scoring 50 in 29 minutes. And then they're scoring 50 in 29 minutes with your grandmother in the building. How much more did it mean to you to have that game with her there? It meant a lot. Um, Not just only having my grandmother there, but she hadn't been to a game in three years. Uh, The last game, she, she used to come to every game and then like three years ago at Golden State, I was looking for her after the game, and she wasn't there. And uh, when I came out, every everybody in my family was looking all sad and stuff and, and bothered. And uh, my mom pulled me to the side and told me that she had been diagnosed with breast cancer. And uh, she had been fighting that for, for a long time. Uh, so it was just great to see her back out and about and healthy and moving around. Um, and at the game where I just happened to have 50 and three quarters. So it was um, a great accomplishment, but it was an even better feeling to see her there because she hadn't been in so long. That is great. Damian Lord's my guest. So you have a career-high 59. A lot of guys in your position sitting on 50 at the end of the third quarter would be looking to get back in there and snap that record and chase a new number. But you said after the game, quote, I'd rather have 50 in 29 minutes with some character than go out there and chase 60, end quote. Really interesting. Lay that out for me. What do you mean by that? I meant, you know, we had we was up by 20 points. And, you know, obviously I could go out there and, you know, probably get 60 or, or more. But that, that wasn't what was necessary. You know, at that point I feel like I would have been almost showing up the opponent, you know, when the game is in hand. Um, it's not really necessary for me to be on the court. So I felt like, you know, I have plenty of opportunity to – uh, probably beat that record, but you know that night just didn't feel like it should have been a night unless you know they came back or something. Damon Lillard joining us. Look, you're not going to make it about you. That's not your deal. But there is no denying that this team is your team. You set the tone. You set the example for everybody else. So how do you approach that role? And then what kind of things have you learned along the way about being a leader? I think just as as being a leader, you got to put the team first. You got to be uh, willing to put other people's feelings and other people's um I guess successes in front of yours at times where you gotta want it bad for other guys so they'll fight harder for you. Um but 
I think the biggest thing I've learned about being a leader is there's going to be a lot of moments where you got to do the, the unpopular thing, uh, maybe to you, where you got to do something that might make other people uncomfortable, or you got to do something to make other people comfortable that might make you uncomfortable. So um, I've been in those situations, but that's probably the, the biggest thing that I've learned about being a leader. You know, Damien, there was a point last month where there was a report that she had a meeting with team owner Paul Allen to discuss the direction of the franchise. I'm not going to ask you about the details of the conversation, but what was the thinking behind that meeting? And then how did you feel coming out of it? Um, the, the point of it was, was only to, to see what direction it was going in. Um, I think, you know, people get so caught up in who the top teams are and all that stuff that um, – Sometimes we even look at them that way instead of, you know, really uh, attacking how we could become one of them. And I just, you know, the, the meeting was only about how, how can we move in that direction. Um, and I left the meeting feeling fine. You know, I just asked some questions. And, you know, I, I always tell people I want to be the, the best blazer ever. I want to win a championship and I want to do it here. So, you know, why not open up that communication to see what needs to happen for us to do it? Talking to Damian Lillard for a few more moments. You're headed to your third All-Star game. You're having a big, big season. I laid the stats out. What does that honor mean to you this year? Um, it means a lot because my first two times I made it, I was on a veteran team. Um, you know, it was really a, a product of, of our success as a team. And it is this year, too, but I feel like I really had to go get it. You know, I had to really impact games and really impact the team for us to be at a level where I could get the nod. Damian Lillard, my guest. And let me ask you something. Let's go back. I mean, before all the 50-point games, before all the all-star appearances, before any of this, when you were in high school, you saw a Babe sweatshirt that you wanted to buy. What do you remember about that sweatshirt and how much it cost? Um, I don't remember how much it cost, but I remember I, I saw Lil Wayne wearing it. And uh, that was, like, the first time I had ever really, like, got into Babe. It was, like, a purple hoodie. Um, had the gorillas all over it. It was like real baggy, um, but it was like it was swaggy. Here. Me and all my friends were like, yeah, Wayne always wearing the bait, and he had the bait shoes and the, you know the bait jeans and all that stuff. So it was kind of a big deal. Um, and from that point on, you know, I think I always had a, a level of interest in bait. Right to that point. Now you fast forward to today. Now you've got a limited edition of the Adidas Dame 4, it's a collaboration with Bape. First of all, how did the collaboration come about? Is it because of what we're talking about right here? And then to see this thing play out in real time after you came up the way you did and just told that story you just told, what's that collaborate, collaboration like for you? I mean, it's it's pretty cool, especially coming from where it came from. Uh, but it's, it's exactly what, what I usually do, where... Um, a lot of things that I have interest in or stuff from my childhood or I'm trying to tell a story and it just comes it comes full circle and that's just another one of those things. Damien, one more one more of one of those things. Now you are on ep six of our podcast back on October third. Your album had just come out three days later and hit the emerging mm -hmm. artist charts. Now you're debuting yeah. at number 32 on Billboard's Emerging Artist Chart on the strength yeah. of your sophomore studio album, Confirmed, which was released on October 6th. What was that experience like? Uh, the, the experience actually recording the album was really cool. It was different from what I did the first time because I had a lot more promotion. Um, I did a, a press run in New York. I did a lot more to... Uh, I guess give it legs even when the season started. So um, where it is now, it's it's pretty cool. You know, I'm out here playing basketball and doing the NBA stuff, and my music is still moving. So, you know, I don't know too many people that have accomplished it, but I feel pretty good about the fact that I have. Well, what is that, Damien? Is that time management? Is that talent? Is that all the above? How can you manage these things? I would never say, yeah, but, yeah, but you're supposed to do this. Because very clearly, you're excel ex excelling at a very high rate in a number of different things. What's the secret to that, the key to that for you? I think it's time management. Like you said, I, I'm not, you know, going to the studio during the season and writing a bunch of music and listening to beats and being up late and all that. So... I'm able to function at a high level as an athlete. 
because uh, during the season I do all the things I need to be doing to make that happen. Um, in the summer, I have a lot of time off, a lot of downtime. So that's the time I use to make a lot of music. Uh, I'm listening to beats. I'm writing stuff. I'm listening to other people's uh, music. So I'm able to, to put out quality music. You know, and any other thing, I might do a show. You know, I did two shows last summer. So um, I think it's time management, just making sure first things come first, but, you know, also having that balance of doing other things that I like to do. In a laser focus, he is a three-time All-Star, and you've got Portland at home tomorrow night against Golden State. Damian Lillard, my guest. Damian, I appreciate the relationship, and always appreciate you making time for this show. Thanks so much for that. Appreciate you having me again. You too, Damian. Be good. Thank you very much. Damian Lillard. Trailblazers are an amazing jungle team, and he's always been great with the show, always done the show. And it's so true, right? I mean, he, for him to, to – first of all, he's got unbelievable talent off the floor. This is very clear. Those in that business respect what he does, where he's coming from, the way he goes about it. There are lots of guys who want to do what he's doing but are unable to do it. How many guys have we seen try that? He is extremely well-respected as an artist and obviously as a player. And leading from the front – all right, we'll take a short time out. We are open now until hour number three.